Hello friends and welcome to this new session. In this session we are going to discuss about the init container. Okay, so this is very important topic regarding the CKA exam prospect. So in this session we are going to discuss about the init container, what is its importance and what is the use cases uh, for the CKA exam also. Uh, like which type of questions they ask in the exam and regarding the in your working environment related with the Kubernetes as well. Okay, so the overview of this session is that we are going to discuss about the init container in, in more details. Okay, and then the use cases and and its behavior, definitely how it's behave in more details. Regarding the CK exam, we are go also going to discuss and then um, we will discuss about the sidecar or the ambassador pattern with the init container that how it works <laughs> if we define a uh, sidecar container which is running as a proxy and the init container which is the helper uh, container for the main container okay so let's jump into the uh, discussion part regarding the init container so an init container in kubernetes is a specialized container so i will just highlight this specialization word so this give you the extra features or fulfill the requirement of the main containers so a specialized container that run before the main container so you have the main container because we run the container to run the our main applications in for the any environment okay so it run before the main container so you can assume that it's definitely it downloading the some binaries okay and uh, to help the main container and if it get fails then the main container uh, will not get up okay so init container play a very important role if you have any problem in the init container to uh, not fulfill their activities or have some problem then the main container will never get up okay so init container can be used to perform the setup task like I mentioned, uh, some uh, you can go. You want to do some uh, copying the file, loading the environment variables, copying the files. Okay, this is the very important and the loading of the environment variables. Uh, like you have some environment variables for the connectivity with the hmm. SQL server or the Oracle server. So you have some environment variable that you need to define before running the main containers, or you or you are waiting for some services to get up. This is very important like you want your main container to be get ready before um, the service needs to be up and before the main container start that's why the main container will when, when the main container will up it will look for the some service to already in the running stage so this types of functionality is provided by the init container because init container run before the main container okay so you can see it's a, a tightly bonding the, between the main container and init container so, okay, the init container run uh, to completions. Okay, init container will run and it will complete the activities, whatever task we assign to the init container. So, uh, when the init container run, it will uh, get completed. Means the task will be either the copying of the file, doing the any setup related task, loading the environment variable, and it will complete. After that, the main container will. Uh, uh, deployed and it will up all the time so that you can access the main container okay meaning that all the commands must exit before the next in and the container starts so in that case you can say that this is a sequential okay the engineer init container will go in a systematic order and you can define multiple init container before the main container so whatever the order you define in the specifications file suppose you have five init container and one main, main container then the five will run in a sequential order if the first init container get failed then the other will not get started okay this is the problem that's why we called it as a tightly coupled one init container can affect other init container and the main container also the main containers start only when all the init containers have completed this is very important guys okay and you they will trick you in the ck exam for this so they will ask you the main container is not running then you have to dig first the in either it have the init container and init containers completed if it container have the problem this is the reason that the main container main container don't have any problem it might be the case in this way they can trick you this allow you to control the order of the executions definitely and the setup of the dependencies between the main container and in the pod 
So we already discussed. Eight container are defined as a part of the pod specification. Definitely, we defined all the things in the pod specification, and we can see the example as well. They share the same network and volumes. This is also a very important question. Like eight container and the main container share the same volume. Okay, to just um, uh, like if you if you, if you see the example, uh, you can understand it that the eight container that have the some something defined to just download it from the internet and put it in a place where the same main container also sharing the same volume, and the main container which is sharing the same volume is able to find that particular things and use in the applications. Okay, so I think these points are also clear. This is the example of the. Uh, init container. Uh, in this, um, you can see that the pod has the two init containers. Okay, init container one here, and which using the busy box. And uh, this particular cell script that outputs hello from the init container one. Okay, so you can assume that and it sits sleep for the uh, ten seconds. Okay, so you can see that it's loading some binaries here. Not uh, just uh, putting the messages, and after the after the loading the binaries, it's uh, say that the, um, I completed my task. And the same the goes for the in container two, which also using the busy box uh, download some binary. After that, there is there is a message, and it's also get completed. After that, this main container have the some dependency on both the in container main uh, container one and two both. Okay, so uh, it start running and using the whatever they downloaded in the shared volumes, and they can use it accordingly. I use the messages, but you can assume that it's doing the actual task. Okay, so um, this is the example of the init container for understanding, and uh, we will use the same example for the demonstration as well. Okay, the, if you talk about the use cases for the init container, init container Kubernetes can be used in a variety of way. Here are a few use cases we are going to discuss, like the configuration setup. Init container can be used to copy configuration file. We already discussed just set the environment variables and perform other tasks required for the main container applications. We already discussed in detail. Okay, wait for dependency. Init container can be used to wait for other services. This is very important. Like if your main application is using some, want to use some app services, then the init container will give a flag. Okay, the service is running properly. Now the main container is ready to start, or the resources to come available before the main container uh, start. For example, waiting for the database, like I also mentioned, and the network connections is also like your uh, in container you want to use some services, and the services has several endpoints, so it. Looking for um, uh, those services to be get started before the main container get up, because that will that is the main container. Okay, data loading. Uh, eight container can be used to data load into the vol shared volume. We already discussed this. Okay, this is the use cases. Uh, this can be uh, helpful for the applications to uh, require a large amount of data to be loaded before they start. Environment variable setup. This is also like if you have the environment variable and you are looking for some values, that that environment variable should be assigned with some values so that the main container will use it. The e container can be used to set up a specific environment for the main container, such as installing the dependencies. Okay, setting up the network, networking, and the configuration application specifications. Uh, specific settings security aspect also we use the container okay uh, we want to configure all the uh, security related aspects these are the few examples and there are there are many more it's depend upon the your use cases okay so you can uh, use these types of um, uh, things for the init container okay uh, regarding the init container and base container as i already mentioned we are going to discuss it this is the tightly coupled and this is the loosely coupled it's goes into this real order okay but it's run in the parallel if you have the ambassador container then all the ambassador will run in a parallel but it go into the in a serial order one by by one okay one will run first and completed then only the second init container will run and the third and then the main applications Okay, so this is this is the things and the the, the init container and init container that run before the main container applications. 
in the pod we already discussed several times it is used to perform set of tasks copying files same we put it here for the differentiations it container returns to the completion uh, completion and uh, must exit before the next read container start okay so we already discussed all this one ambassador container if you didn't watch my video you can go for the ambassador container a side container so ambassador container on the other hand is a type of sidecar container there are difference between the ambassador and sidecar but it's type of sidecar okay that use acts as a proxy okay so you are using this ambassador container ambassador container is connecting to the database that's why it's called the proxy because ambassador is used by the main container uh, ambassador which is working as a proxy is using for the connections connectivity for with the sql okay in the same cluster it used to traffic route the traffic to the other services and the load balancing things so we discussed uh, uh, in detail in my videos regarding the ambassador container and you can refer it okay so in summary init container is used to perform the set of tasks before the main container start while the ambassador container act as a proxy of for the service in the same cluster okay while uh, they provide uh, in the same cluster but uh, we have the alternative for this that we can use the services okay that's why uh, the ambassador container now it is used for the uh, to to just um, get the connectivity with the outside the cluster okay some api connectivity is required in that case but for the database we can use the services so these are the main differences uh, between the init container and the ambassador container and now we are going to, we are jumping to the lab session for the demonstrations okay okay friends so we are using the eks cluster of uh, the Kuba, the for the kubernetes of the aws uh, and uh, we are connected through the browser okay so here we have a file as well that we are going to demonstrate and let me get this file i dot okay so here you can see that uh, for the api version we are using the vi the kind will be the pod because uh, we are going to create the init uh, container and it have the two container which we already discussed both using the busy box even the main container is also running the busy box and it will do some activities like in my case it's uh, just um, uh, echo the some uh, some text and sleep for the 10 seconds and the sleep for the five seconds the second uh, container after that when the both container will uh, run properly then the main container will execute and uh, after that we can see the log for the echo uh, help from main container okay so this is very uh, simple for the understanding and i written it down to just save the time okay and i'm just going to apply it so currently if you see kubectl and get pod we don't have any pod in the default uh, namespaces okay so let me apply it q ctl apply minus f the file name is i.yaml okay and when it's get applied you can uh, you can watch it or you can see the kubectl get pod it, it will uh, provide you the information so you this currently under the initialization trait so it have the two container that's why you are getting the two messages here okay when the main uh, container will get up it will not show uh, these informations okay so it will get one pod so it's completed now it's completed now we can uh, see the log of the main container which uh, uh, is the my pod applications so you ctl uh, get uh, sorry log of my pod uh, sorry logs of my pod so you can see that the message is get up so this is coming from the main container if you if you see the messages that i echo hello from the main container so you can understand that the when the uh, both the init container first uh, the it's going for the init container to be get executed and zero out of two get executed after two out of two the message will be completed okay and then uh, we can assume that the main container will get up if you have any problem at this stage then then the main container have the problem if you have the error then at the init phase init phase then it means that the uh, init container have the problem so in in this case um, you can investigate accordingly okay so that is for the for this video if you like my videos 
you can subscribe to my channel and share it with your friends. Give a thumbs up. So have a, have a nice day and keep learning.